Some would say that Ken Morris is the king of stripes because a few years ago, he started the Stripe Life Facebook group, which has grown to almost 50,000 members. That's crazy. Well, I had the distinct honor to catch up with Ken at the Equip Expo a few weeks back, and we had a blast talking together. We talked about everything from him leaving his full-time job in security to jump into solo lawn care life, and just a lot of stuff about Equip Expo. Before we get into it, the Checkpoint Podcast is brought to you by Check, the home service business management app to reduce the time you have to spend around your admin tasks. Why? Because admin sucks, that's why. So you can start your 14-day free trial right now by going to the link in the show notes or by going to hellocheck.co. All right, let's jump into this episode. All right, welcome to the Checkpoint Podcast. I'm here with Ken Morris of the Strife Life. In the flesh. And this is... We're here at Equip Expo 2022, so pumped. We actually, this is the second podcast we've done together, right? Correct. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah, so we recorded one last night. Totally didn't get the audio. It was a huge <laughs> it's only, bummer. It was only like an hour. It was, it was yeah, deal. yeah, yeah. I mean, but it was it was really good stuff. We're going to try to salvage some of the video. But anyways, it's, it's a good thing that you're an interesting guy. And we have plenty of stuff to talk with you about. Tomorrow is going to be lit. Let's lit. just, let's just oh jump gosh. right into it. Can, can I give context for that? Or is that context? Yeah, however, that's fine. This just in today at Equip Expo 2022, DeWalt's new sit stand hybrid mower electric caught on fire. Crazy. It's a really awkward situation. Especially I, when you are an EV ambassador. Yes. Yeah. But man, that's uh, that's really awkward. Now, I, I personally grew up with my dad using only DeWalt power power tools. I personally have all DeWalt power tools. I will always have all DeWalt power tools. But man, that's a big L for DeWalt. Well, today. you literally did a video on it. Like, I did a like video. What an hour did, prior? Did did I curse? Hey, this is Chase. Should I answer? Sure. What up, dude? I'm uh, me and me and Ken were recording a podcast, so I I was like, it's Chase. I'm gonna answer it, and they're like, put it on speaker, so you're actually getting recorded right now. Who's the stripe like? There's nobody. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, oh, so look, uh, good question. I'm just a meme page. Yeah, the stripe life is basically a. It, it's just a meme page. It's a meme platform. That one, yeah. that one day, that was today. That was hilarious. I yeah. laughed out loud. Mean green. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah! I made that. That's in the future. I I made that. Uh, that was gold. That was gold. <laughs> yeah, I made that. I was a. Uh, I was pretty proud of myself. I can't say that I did it alone. <laughs> I won't mention my accomplice. <laughs> but anyways, are they big dog? Right, see you. Guys. See you. <laughs> he just said, "What is this drive like?" <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how long have you known Chase? So I uh, ran into them at, so my first expo was last year Okay, and they set us up in the hustler booth for two days and that yeah. was like really cool, surreal and just walking around, ran into them. Yeah. And it, what's cool about the show is you follow guys like you were saying Yeah, yeah. and you see them in real life and, and it doesn't matter if they have a thousand followers or a million followers. It's, it's, it's really cool seeing these people. So we talked online a little bit, but I talked them out at the show, I actually walked them into like Ferris trying to talk and, and do stuff, but and, you know he's he's one of the top guys for he, sure. Yeah, you know? he is. I I, uh, I I think really highly of him just as a person, also as a content creator. He's like, he's like absolutely hilarious. I don't know about you. I was actually caught off guard with how tall he was whenever I met him the I first didn't time. I think he was that tall. Yeah. Um, but with Chase, the thing I like about Chase is that usually when you get these guys and they grow some serious platforms, yeah. it goes to their head. Mm -hmm. And he's the real deal. So, you know, you want to be honest, you want to show off the stuff that you genuinely think is the tops. Sure. But, I mean, he was born into lawn care. Yeah. Uh, he's got a legitimate thing going, and the yeah. guy's a hard worker. So, stuff like that I respect. Yeah. And uh, from a marketing standpoint, the guy's, you know, pretty good. Yeah. He's one of the tops. So, yeah. if, if not, you know, the top. Uh, yeah. But. High praise from someone who just put you down. Yeah, I know. Hurtful, right? You, you forgive him, though. Yeah. Well, we're hoping he gives out a couple keychains. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, well, dude, tell me, tell me, like, kind of how you got started in lawn care. Like, you. so for those who don't know, 
you you run the paint like you run the page. You are the creator of the Stripe Life Lawn Care Facebook group, which is about to like maybe any minute top fifty thousand. We're hoping, yeah, maybe after tomorrow. Like that's a that's a big deal to have like a community of fifty thousand people, and it's not like it's not just a Facebook group with with that's idle. Like it is an active Facebook group of people who are posting. Posting pictures, interacting with each other, trying what, to help each other. What's cool out, is so. that the Facebook group, unlike Instagram or TikTok or other pages that are out there, it's a million percent organic. You cannot yeah. buy followers. You can't yeah. advertise for followers. So it, it's a really big deal that it's a million percent organic. Can't be faked like other stuff. And uh, you know, it, it's really there to help people out. And yeah. it's the bigger we get, the harder it is to keep it clean and professional and fun. Sure, sure. But, you know, people don't see that behind the scenes stuff. But because you have it, a kind of an ar- a small army of mods, small and army of ex baseball teammates and friends. Yeah. Uh, my dad's still on there. Uh, he was literally blocking thousands of people for saying shit as a key word. And I was like, look, you know, <laughs> if the guy says, hey, those stripes are the shit, don't block them. You know, it, it's you got to take it in context. He's like, they shouldn't be talking like that. <laughs> So, you know, after we, I, I think I, I, I forget what it's called on there, but we kind of gave him like a pause with moderating power for a while. It didn't go over well at the dinner table. You blocked him, But dude. we let him have his powers back. But it's, it's a, like every day, you know, like hot days during season, you could have like hundreds of posts that try to get through. Wow. And we're selective on what goes through. We try to keep it on point, positive. Yeah. Um, but you also try to let some things go through. You can't block stuff, even if it's with brands that I work for. It's one thing to not like a brand. It's another thing to be like, oh, they're total shit for no reason. Like yeah. if you had a bad experience, we'll let it go through, even if it's a, a brand that we work with and help and support yeah. and use ourselves. But don't just like put something down with no context. That's fair. So it's it's constant moderation. Yeah. Uh, the Instagram, however, is is you know a lot of more memes and showcasing stuff. Which but I'm a massive fan of. Yeah. Like I I've been following the account for quite a while. Memes aren't easy. I mean, it's creative no. genius that go into that. And uh, you know, the group is definitely separate. The Instagram is a completely different thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Our Instagram helps other Instagrams grow. Yeah. And showcases their talent and hard work. And that's what we're all about. That's, you know, the whole key to the Stripe Life is showing off the talent and hard work here. Yeah. So in addition to memes, we're about helping other people. Yeah. And we do it for free. But, but like, d- dude, you're at 50,000 in this Facebook group now. But, like, what what possessed you to say, like, I want to start a Facebook group? And then how did it, like, when you crossed, like, your first 100 people, like, what was going through your mind when you're like, oh, my gosh. So, I got 100, or like, I full-time pawnbroker in the deadliest city per capita okay. in the country. And, you know, doing five or six, seven yards on the side. Okay. Just mostly because I enjoyed lawn care. Like, and when did, you, when did you start that? probably like 15 okay. uh, like actually like seriously cutting maintaining like five to ten yards a week sure. uh, in addition to working full-time and doing other stuff um but you know i grew up playing baseball love the stripes that's how you yeah. know, kind of get into it mm. and um you know you're, you're doing that part-time and you're trying to get help hey what how do i sharpen my blades how do i do this how can i get better what equipment's out there you know car guy i've had 32 vehicles uh i'm 36 years old so i have a problem with that um, yeah, yeah. but you know, constantly liking equipment and, and stuff like that. So you would go into these groups on Facebook and try to ask questions and get help. And it's like, man, if I was like a new person and asking a question that it's like some basic stuff you should know, you would Dude. get, you would get killed. And it's like, man, I, I, that guy, that was hurtful. I just, I just, like I'm I just, just asked about blades. Just, just how do I sharpen the blades? And you know, I'm getting called all these names. So yeah. it's like. I'm sitting there at the pawn shop one day. Or like lawn side. Did you ever mess with lawn side? No, before? it's just Facebook, really. I mean, lawn side is your typical 1990s forums, forums that yeah. has not, literally has not Just kind of changed, basic but basic like, Facebook searches that's, that's and like weekend warrior stuff you hear. So I wasn't a weekend warrior. Mm. I was off on Sundays and Wednesdays. Okay. So I would cut three to five on Sunday, yeah. and five to six on Wednesday, yeah. seven days a week. And I was sitting there in a pawn shop in Baltimore City. I was like, you know what? I'm sick of this shit. Like, everybody's a f- <laughs> And I said, I want to create a place that's fun, that's, you know, going to be helpful. And we're actually going to try to help people in this industry. Yeah. You know what I mean? Never set out to 
you know, do equipment uh, reviews and all this other stuff sure. that that's came like, that's great, but still the main goal is, is still it to today. And, you know, it, it's, it's been awesome. And like yeah. you're saying, so we had hit a hundred people. Wow. This is, this is cool. And what I would do is I would penetrate these other lawn care groups. Okay. And I'd be like, Hey man, come check us out. We're doing some giveaways or something. And then yeah. we would get a rush, a bum rush, like 500 people, 600 people. And then of Whoa. course I would get blocked for oh yeah promoting you know self-promotion but so the, i i couldn't tell you yeah see i can't tell you how many groups i'm probably blocked from in the beginning of growing this platform and the sacrifices that i laid down <laughs> for getting banned from so many things uh but it, that's how we started going i think once we hit like a thousand it was like really cool and yeah. it was like man like this is kind of cool and uh i didn't start really showing my face till really last year so, whenever you started put like is that whenever you jumped on TikTok? So yeah, so really until I started TikTok, I never really showed my face. Uh, wow. I would make majority of all posts and giveaways and any kind of promotional stuff or stuff to try to help grow was always through the Stripe Life store page. So it would say Stripe Life posted this yeah. and our whatever the store page logo was. So Ken Morris was kind of a ghost. So when we got invited to the show last year with Hustler to give away keychains and yeah. and grow, like we had so many people seen the table skirt and was like, oh, wow, man, Stripe Life, I follow this. It's like, who the hell are you? And it's like, oh, you know, hey. Uh, so, yeah. it's so like, what's your hand literally they're, make a they're, meme they're about taking you. pictures of Mower Man. They're taking pictures of Beck yeah. the Beast. And I'm yeah, just yeah, sitting there yeah. holding the phones. I was like, hey, what's going on? Yeah. Like, this, hey, is, hey. this is my table, guys. Uh, well, hey, guys. So, <laughs> remember me? So it's like, all right, I got to start making TikToks. And, you know, the TikTok yeah. is my lowest platform. We're like 25-ish thousand. We've got some really good ones in there. It doesn't yeah. matter what the numbers say. Yeah, you do. Uh, but... That's like really got my face out there. Yeah. Uh, so we started growing everything uh, slowly, but uh, now it's like your actual face is out there. So you know, it's pretty I, cool. I think that I think that's like really helpful. I mean, I think whenever something gets super big, people like to latch onto a person or a story, you know, uh, rather than like more of a brand. Well, it's so funny. That's, like that's, like that's my cool. my hustler rep, like who I work with, and he's really big uh, with hustler. Mm. And we were talking and, you know, how, what do you do? What should you do? We're always, Hey, you know, how, how can we help each other? And he's like, you have to start making stuff with you in it. He's like, you're he the character. You, yeah. He goes, so it doesn't matter if you're built like a refrigerator. <laughs> he goes, people want to see it. You know what I mean? So put yourself in the videos and, and I've been trying to do that and I hate it. Yeah. I mean, and anybody that makes uh, content knows, I mean, that might be a 14 second video, yeah. but it took me three hours, you sure. know, like some of them that you literally uh, direct and, and do all this thoughtful stuff mm -hmm. and you're doing it, they'll get like 900 views. You take a picture of your shoe falling off the tractor. It's like 2.8 million makes no sense. It's absurd. But you, you know, you definitely have to make yourself known no matter what you look like, what you're doing, yeah. uh, because people want to see regular people, you know, yeah. and if you're good looking. And, like, and thick like you if you're thick yeah, there's you a know, lot to love for the yeah. double c it, it definitely gets you know better views and uh i think that's what makes me do pretty good in some of the stuff with myself uh, like i made that one where i did this big landscaping job so i yeah. quit my job after 12 years ago full-time lawn care yeah. Yeah. this year uh i didn't want to do it it was like in may or june you know, I didn't have enough solo accounts to yeah. really hold me over, but just couldn't take what I was dealing with. And that was so scary. You know what I yeah. mean? Anybody that's worked for a place for 10 plus years and quits yeah. without a job lined up. With a family. With yeah, like family. You, you we just moved. We, we've like been in this new house, the most expensive mortgage I've ever had for like six months. And I, I tell my wife, I was like, you know what? Hey, I uh, quit today. And she's like, Wow. But is, we've been is, <laughs> we've been talking about how unhappy Wait, I was for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, like the stripe life and all the other stuff, like there's so many things that are time consuming. So you're working yeah. seven days a week. So I was like, look, I got a little bit of a savings. Yeah. I, I told her I was like, I don't even need to work for like a year. Now at the end yeah. of the year we'll have nothing. <laughs> yeah. But you know, we have <laughs> a be year <laughs> before we have nothing. So we're yeah. we're okay and yeah. you know, still mowing. So I, I can make decent money with what I had on the table. Like I yes. could pay my bills by the skin with just my mowing accounts. Yeah. So never really did a whole lot of landscaping. Like I would do hedge trimming, basic stuff, you know, mulch cleanups and leaf cleanups and all that kind of stuff, leaf beds. But the big thing was 
I now had a bunch of people in my community trying to help me because of the Stripe Life pa- uh, platform that I created. Yeah. But it's summer in Maryland, and all these guys are giving me like cleanup jobs that are coming yeah. their way because nobody wants to do yes. spring cleanups in July and June when it's hot as anything. So yeah, I'm yeah. like, oh, hey, yeah, throw it my way. I'm going out there dying. Yeah. You know, six foot one, you know, 268 in the morning uh, yeah. without any breakfast in me. So solid. So I would be going to these jobs and like dying, man, like four hours in, I can't feel my legs, my ass muscles, like, you know, just like choking up on me and getting like that, you know, you get that Charlie horse in your ass and your leg and the guys are looking at me. I'm like limping around. I'm like, you know, I feel like they're going to call an ambulance for me. They stung me. I was like, can you just drive my truck home for me? But so I was like, man, like landscape and lawn care, two different worlds. Yeah. I mean, and that's, a, I don't think a lot of guys, when they jump solo or they jump out there, they're like, oh, I'm going to go from cutting 15, 20 yards a week to doing some cleanup jobs and doing yeah. some stuff. And it's like, man, I am one, not in shape for this. And two, don't have the face for it either. Cause, you know, I got a pretty face and I was getting dirty out there and mulch and, and all sorts of stuff. But, it was it was an eye opener. It was like holy shit! Like yeah. you know, I can make great money in one day, but yeah. I can't even like wake up the next day. Yeah. You know, just that Charlie horse doesn't go away. So yeah. it, it's it's been it's been pretty crazy. Yeah, you know, I I remember uh, my first ever hedge trimming job. I didn't know that trick. Like like a little life hack for anyone who's doing hedge trimming. You you lay down one of the tricks. Um, you lay down a tarp. And then you trim the hedges so that all the clippings fall I've onto seen, the tarp. I've seen smart people do that. Yes. And then, yeah, well, I was not one of those smart <laughs> yeah. people. And in it was in uh, I was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'm cutting. I'm doing my first hedge trimming job, and I make it about an hour into this thing. I'm like picking everything up. It was over 100 degrees with the heat index, Jeez. but it was like I think it was like 80 percent humidity. So it was just like hard to breathe. And all of a sudden it was like, it, it was like in one minute, my heart increased like 20 beats per minute. And I was like, I got to go sit down right now. And you're like 160 pounds. Uh, bro, I'm about like a buck 70. <laughs> I, was like, I was like kindergarten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, imagine that. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. if you go out and you drive by 10 landscapers, right, yeah. that are out hedge trimming. 99.9% of them are not 268 pound white guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I'm like a dying breed in this industry. But imagine that day, you know. Hopefully not literally. Yeah, but like, <laughs> but like, like carrying a whole different linebacker body, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's crazy. But I made a video. I, I got this doctor's house. Well, a guy threw me, hey, you want this hedge trimming job? I was like, yeah, I got nothing cooking this week. So I yeah. go down there. It's 100 degrees in like July. How, and this I house, know. this house must oh have God. been 9,000 square feet. Okay. And I underbid the shit out of it. I'm like, he's like, and he's like 75 years old. Rich people are super cheap and hard to work with. If, if, you know, anybody knows that. Can't, can't. Hey, how much to hedge trim around the entire house? Cut down this tree, cut down this little tree. What did you say? You can just take everything in the woods. I was like, ah, you know, I think it's going to be like two days worth of work. Uh, I'll do it for a thousand dollars. And Day one, I almost called an ambulance on myself because I couldn't feel my legs. And Somebody call an ambulance. So day two, I brought but I brought my son, me. who's fourteen, and he did great. Uh, but when I, the funny thing is about that story is when I, I give him the quote, I'm like, it's five hundred dollars a day. Yeah. So he, he's asked me, what's my hourly? What's my day? I was like, look, I'm I'm do this job for a thousand bucks. I think it's five hundred dollars a day. And uh, it's thousand dollar total job. So I, I show up, and he comes outside. I got my truck, got everything. Yeah. He goes, "Yeah, how many guys are in your crew?" I was like, "You're looking at him, man." He's like, "You're a big boy for this kind of work." So I made a little fun video on that, and and it did pretty well. And, but it was, you know, it was hurtful for a minute actually. But <laughs> I was like, "Damn!" And that's when I did. I think that other one that was still at his house, the same yeah. guy's house, where I like threw that log. Remember? Yeah. And I was like, man, oh, you do CrossFit? That's cute. I eat Fruity Pebbles or something yeah, and do I, landscaping. I, yeah, I reuse that. Oh, you do CrossFit? That's cute. 
I ate fruity pebbles in landscape. That was Sad. day I two that was of funny. that hell that I underbid. Yeah, uh, you look pretty pretty worn out in, the, in that. And one. I even he even offered me. So when my son came the second day, he was helping me out a lot. And the guy comes out, and he goes face first into this walkway, this brick walkway. And he's probably seventy five years old. And I was like, man, are, are you okay? And he's bleeding all over. Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. And then he oh, comes out man. afterwards. I guess Robert. he felt embarrassment, but he's yeah. like, hey, since yeah. your son's here, helping should I pay you extra today? Like, do you want extra money? And my son's like, you know, duh. And I was like, no, I said a thousand dollars. I'll do it for a thousand dollars. But it was an eye opener. And then boom, next job I get landscape and I go over there and I'm like, look, you know, my mind's telling me this is a thousand dollars, but I was like, you know what? But my body's I'll do this. Me I'll that. do this for 1500. Now this person knew about my platform and my, yeah. my, you know, local page that I had and stuff. And they thought it was super cool. So I said 1500 and she's like, done. I called my buddy who does this full time. He's got like four crews. I said, I need you to meet me over here. I need one guy. He's like, you sure you don't want two or three or four guys? You know, he's got a whole bunch of guys. Yeah. And I said, just one guy. I was cheap again. Yeah. So another learning experience. We're four hours into a, a cleanup around another 10,000 square foot mansion. And this was giant rock. So like there's no tools. You have to hand pick this yeah. stuff out. You can't whip it because it'll fly rocks everywhere. Yep. So you're just on your knees picking up all this shit, some hedge trimming. Again, like almost 100 degrees. I'm three hours in. I'm texting him like, dude, send me the send army. Help, send, send whatever. He had this guy that was Hispanic that couldn't even speak English. And he just, every time I look at him, he's smirking at me. Because he knows I'm like dying. Like I'll go over to the cooler to get a drink and I'm like literally limping over there and I can't even walk. I got <laughs> chafed ass like a son of a bitch. Like I'm on third degree chafage right there at like 11 a.m. Oh and uh, I, you know, I was like, dude, just send your guys. He's like, I can't. We're on another job. I told you to listen to me. And I was like, I'm going to die out here, man. So I said, look, I tell you what, I said, I will split this whole job with you if you just finish this job. So it was, we were circling the house, cleaning yeah. these beds. So we had half the house done with me and this one guy, yeah. like for six hours. Wow. He sent a truck over after I told him I'd split it. Yeah. It was like 30 minutes, man, 30 minutes. And it was over. So I was like, if I just paid him a little bit more, I would have went home and not, you know, had really bad chafe job. You could have just sub. Yeah. You could have just sub that. So that's, so that out. opened my eyes. Yeah. So you, you can only live and learn with pricing. And if you don't do landscaping, you don't know how long it's going to really take. Yeah. Your mind thinks that you're younger and, you know, in better shape. So now I kind of sub all my landscaping stuff to him, but I still like to be there. I still like to put in yeah. a solid half day at least. Yeah. So like my face is there, I'm there yeah. and they see that I'm actually doing, that. I don't that's like cool. when people will just, Bid the job, sub the job, and you never show up. You never work. So it looks good when you're actually there yeah. doing stuff. But That's awesome, man. Know your limits. Know dude, your body. That's awesome. So you're focusing on mostly on lawn care. And all right, well, dude, all right, so tomorrow we are going to be at the Hustler, Cub Cadet, DeWalt, Stanley. There's really not any was, Stanley stuff, though. They just own everything. Was it Black & Decker Stanley? DeWalt? Hustler. It's like, yeah. It's just like... The biggest the big, booth at the show. In the smack dab middle so of the floor, it's, right? It's literally the biggest booth at the biggest show. Uh, it's it's wild to just yeah. have the opportunity to set up and know people. Yeah. And, you know, for them to set us up there for a second year, even though the merger and everything yeah. is is awesome. So That's really cool. Well, really we're, lucky yeah, to have that. We're stoked about that. But by the time this gets out, um, it's you know, it's not going to be uh, – relevant to anyone anymore but we're stoked to give away a yeti with you tomorrow it's gonna be fun um, giving away a lot of yetis and so i'm excited to see how that goes i think that it will be a good we'll turnout see how, yeah i mean it's curious because some people complain oh well they flew in they're not going to take a yeti roadie home it's like why would i not just check it 20 30 for a 265 sure. dollar cooler i would do that all day I, who's not going to do that but so we have a max of two thousand like coupon tickets, yeah, yeah. raffle tickets to give out. I don't think we're going to give out 2000 tickets. Really? So if we did, then what if it, if we I'll give take a, the rest of if them. you give out 2000 by 11 o'clock, then it's done for that. But we still have thousands of keychains, stickers, yeah. member cards, lanyards, you name it. Um, but the goal is to hand out raffles to tell people up front, Hey, the only way you're going to win is if you're here at four. And the only yeah. thing you got to do is be here at four. Yeah. So there's no magic. Uh, you know, we're not making people scan anything. Yeah. 
you don't have to give us any info. Uh, you know, if you want to like our pages would be great, but it's yeah, not yeah. mandatory. Um, but I think the people that do show up at Fort Worth have a really good chance of winning some awesome, awesome stuff. Yeah. Last year we had one Yeti Roadie 24. Okay. We filled it with our keychains and left it open and everyone walked by. They're like, I don't care who you are, what you are. How do I win this Yeti? Yeah. And we're like, oh, we'll give it away in our group if you follow our group. So it's like, you know, it, it, it didn't do as great, but everybody wanted it. So I was like, you know, yeah. how about this year we give them away there and yeah. we get a lot of them. It'd and be fun. so, and we're in the hottest booth. At the show. Hottest. It's Hottest. like, it it's is lit. so lit. It's lit. So freaking lit. Flaming. Fire, some would say. Yeah. Yeah. So like, literally, good. it was uh, one of the mowers in that booth was voted the hottest mower of the show. Today. I mean, it, it actually it, won. It actually won that today. It's like It's unreal. The show. It, it's, you know, the first Equip Expo has a, a fire mower yeah. on the first day of the show. First day. Uh, and we happened yeah. to be in that booth sharing with that mower so we were yeah. going to try to bring a fire extinguisher and give that away as yeah. well but i made a yeah i made a shut video down by about marketing. that i made a video about that mower like two hours before it caught flame the sit stand the first yeah. ever of its kind yeah well actually so matt uh matt our, our marketing guy he used to he used to run right stuff yeah and he whenever i was like dude this dewalt mower uh sit stand he's like Right already made that. Yeah. What, what was it called, bro? The Centaur? The Centaur, yeah. The Centaur. The Centaur. Yeah, so, like, wonder why that guy got Well, yeah, it came yeah. with it came with a clip-on horsetail that you had to wear whenever <laughs> you wrote. Ro- no, you didn't go for that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but, so we went straight over to uh, Wright's booth, and we're like, do y'all still make the Centaur? And <laughs> so Did like, they even know what you were talking about? Yeah, he did. He's like, no. We was don't Ed there? I saw Ed in the like uh in the back but we didn't i've we didn't talked talk. to ed a couple of times like on instagram and stuff he okay. sent us hats and uh because even brands we don't work with we try not to be like super biased we, we you know we yeah. want to show off everybody we want to demo stuff but in this day and age it's hard to get stuff for demos just because of the shortage yeah of products but he sent us hats and keychains and stuff he's semi-local to me in the same state so i've been trying to get like a tour of the warehouse that i can't do sick. uh he seems like a nice guy yeah uh, so i, I haven't you know but they are a powerhouse, and yeah. I haven't ever been able to run a right, but what his dad has done in the industry is is wild. I mean, it, didn't his dad invent, like, the Salky? The standard. Yeah, but he, he invented, invented, the Salky, invented the Salky first. Then the standard. And then they made the standard first. So, I mean, they're the first look standard. at those things. So, right now, <laughs> standards are a hot thing. I, yeah. I you know, personally don't the like DeWalt, it. The DeWalt, hottest yeah. standard. <laughs> But look, look at like all this stuff that's, that's came from this guy's dad and from him taking over. Now, I don't know, you know, haven't followed them forever, but it seems like what Ed does since he came in, if anything is like over build stuff, which is like, to me, I grew up watching tool time, you know, and and so home improvement and tool time, Yeah, bro. I feel like, I don't know how old Ed is. But Ed, I like. I think of Tool Time. Like Ed this guy's totally, like, hey, Ed totally. We, we could drop a thirty-five horsepower in this, but let's do a forty and put dualies on this thing. Like, what do you think yes. of that? Are you talking I mean, about that ZK? Dude, that it's seventy-two. In, they had uh, they had a sit down with dualies with a bagger. I mean, on a stand up. I've never seen a stand on with bag. I before. actually saw that today. It, it, it was, was like, insane. It was it was a rig, bro. So this guy is like Binford Tool Timing these mowers to the extreme. So yes. it's like. What can we do to make what if what if half this mower they're sitting around this marketing table, right? Yeah, yeah. And they're like, look, you know, we, we have the best stand ons. We created this stuff. Yeah. What else can we do? And then Ed's like, hear me out. And then this guy's like, hey, what if one of the wheels goes into a swamp a little bit, right? And I the guy's like, that. I got it. Let's put dualies on this thing right and, and jack up the horsepower like, that is so sick the, the, yeah his stuff is wild so i'd love to try to you know demo it to show it off and everyone says yeah. I, i've driven stand-ons right yeah. and i just my big thing was i'm ocd and i'm a perfectionist yeah. and with stripe life like if you post a stripe picture and it's just got the littlest you know a little a little bee or a fly hits you mm. and you twitch a little mm. bit and mm-hmm. it's got you can't even post it. Can't post it. So no. with the stand-ons, like when you try to go fast, yeah, uh, it's a drunken stripe. I mean, I'll hit that thing three, four times. It's still not good with it. Yeah. Well, so they say the rights have a better, smoother yeah. control. Well, you know about looking at a fixed point, right? No, I've never. Heard. What is that? Thank you. It doesn't work on a stand-on. 
Of course it does. I don't know. You know I, of course it and does. I've got I've got man hands. They're long fingers. I know what you're thinking. This guy's got small hands. That's why he can't control it. But I just want to paint that for the you know no, no, the, it the was, listeners that my hands are uh, they're big hands. Are but good you hands. but you don't run a stander uh, <laughs> consistently enough to probably actually. Well, that's like, what get, a lot of really people good. said. Like that's you that's what I'm thinking because of of course the the uh, like. T- picking a fixed point and like going towards it, you have to trust where where your overlap is because if you look down, you're gonna like mess. Well, I mean, up for me, anyway. like a lot of my accounts, I'm in Maryland. Yeah, the the customers like won't let me trim the trees. They don't want to pay for like anything extra. So on the stander, I'm six foot one. I like I'm yeah. ducking all the time. I'm having a hard time controlling it. It won't go straight. Yeah, and I'm like, you know what? I could be sitting on a suspension seat right now, <laughs> listening to Kelly Clarkson. And just <laughs> just jamming out through these yards. Why am I trying this? Like, I, I I know like <laughs> I know like people like them and they want to push them. They do. They're just not for everybody. And that's what's yeah. great about the industry is you, you have all these different choices. Yeah. You know. And let's hope that gas electric's the same kind of choice. Yeah. Um, I don't like it forced, but just like everything else, you should have an option and a choice. Sure. So standards are not for everyone. Yeah. But uh, definitely Ed Wright, huge impact to the industry and definitely deserves a shout out. Get he it. gets what we like to call the Stripe Life seal of approval. Mm. And uh, him and his dad are pretty cool in my book, even if he doesn't want to let me demo anything. Um, well, we could use some more hats, Ed, so appreciate it. I moved, so I got to give you my new address. Right. Could you go ahead and just say that into the mic? It's 3003. <laughs> everybody has it. My shit's all over the door. I'm at the expo. People are texting me, calling me, sending me know, pictures. Dude. It's like, yeah. I don't care. Hey, you got to stop by this booth. You got to, hey, you want to go yeah. to Waffle House tomorrow? Like, I'm open. I'm an open book. You know, you, you can't yeah. hide this stuff and you got to be real. So, yeah. and that's the thing. Like, just want to help people out. There's a lot of ways yeah. you can make money in the industry and everybody's out to make money. Um, but, you know, I'm fortunate. Like, I'm working part time now uh, at the pawn shop, like our biggest competitor. So, mm-hmm. I work a couple days a week doing that. Yeah. Do lawn care four days a week, all the marketing, all the other stuff busy man well dude i'm excited to share a booth with you tomorrow we might throw on the headphones and do a little podcast there or at least bring some other people to the table um stoked to know you man appreciate yeah, it thanks for joining fun thanks for joining on the checkpoint podcast thanks man all right my dude talk to you soon Thank you so much for sitting in on my conversation with Ken today. I had an absolute blast with that one. You know, the thing that struck me the most about Ken is how committed he is to the operator. I mean, he cares so much about the members of the Stripe Life and really wants them to get really solid, honest, and clear information about the tools and equipment that operators are going to use so that they can build their businesses better and faster. So if you're the kind of lawn care operator that loves crispy, clean, beautiful, straight stripes, and also helpful people, go ahead and join the Stripe Life Facebook group. We'll see you next time.